Uh, let's talk to Tony in New York, a Catholic who wants to have a conversation about God's existence. Tony, you are on the line. Yeah, how you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Hey, Tony, we're doing all right. I'm all right. That's good. Yeah, I believe, uh, you know, I'm Catholic myself. I believe that uh, Jesus Christ does exist. Um, I've been attending church not as much as I used to, to be honest with you. Uh, nowadays, I attend church maybe once uh, once every two weeks, once every three weeks. But I grew up uh, going once a week, every Sunday. And I have kids myself, and I believe that, you know, we all, we all came from somewhere because, I mean, we didn't come out of the air. You know what I mean? It's not like we, uh, you know, we somehow dropped out, out of the sky or something. We all got somewhere. And the only radical, like, only reason I can see, even though I do have some doubt in general, I believe that he does exist because we didn't come from, you know, we didn't poof out air. You know what I mean? And we got to believe, uh, we got to believe in is him. Is that really? You know? Tony, the fact that we didn't poof out of the air, does that mean that the only other explanation is that God created everything? Uh, if God doesn't exist, it would be very scary, my friend, to be honest with you. You know that? Well, I, now, I didn't. So, so once again, Tony, I've been doing this for 20 years and I'm really good at asking specific questions. So I'd like it if people okay. would answer the questions I ask. If it's All true right. that we didn't pop out of the air, is therefore God created us the only other explanation? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Okay. So you don't think evolution is possible at all? Uh, evolution is possible, but not in a form of man creating himself. No. Oh, no, no. I, evolution has nothing to do with anything creating itself. It just demonstrates that life changes and eventually results in us modern. I believe there is a form of evolution. Absolutely. We see it in ourselves. Uh, as okay, a, but, but evolution doesn't require a God and doesn't take a God into account. And so you, you what you seem to want, which is fine because a lot of Catholics want this, is you want to accept the science behind evolution, but inject a God into it. But as soon as you do that, you undermine everything about evolution to which now evolution is irrelevant because God could create without evolution and evolution doesn't require a God. So it's like saying, um, I, there's a, there's a cake downstairs. Now we know that my wife could bake a cake and we know that God could create a cake, at least, you know, when we're, when we're listing off things, God could do if he existed. And so if I walk downstairs and I find a cake. Is it more reasonable for me to conclude that my wife made a cake or my wife made a cake with God's help or God made the cake? More reasonable, probably your wife made the cake, I would say. Yeah. At that point. And that's because that's kind of familiar to us. Why does it suddenly change Correct. when you're talking about human beings? Because I'm presuming that you know about sexual intercourse and how sperms and eggs get together and form a human being and that that human yeah, being then kids, grows. And it, so, you know, yeah, I, I thought you might knew and you're Catholic. So I didn't want, but you never assume. Um, so that's how all that happens. Your kids are different from you. You're different from your parents. Um, if this happens for millions of years, how does that not result in a sufficient change in people? Um, there's no God involved in you creating your four kids. You know, um, I, I believe that in terms of my kids or my change or revolution or whatever you, that you're speaking about, but you know what? I mean, listen, I, evolution does definitely happen. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Um, and do I feel blessed about having a kid? Yes. Uh, cause my kids are all healthy. They're, they came out real nice. You know, there's no, like you have kids who are born with defects nowadays. My kids have no defects, so I'm proud of that. You know what I mean? But, uh, in, in terms of, you know, do I pray to them? Yes. Do I get some kind of reciprocation? I believe so, you know, because I actually has, um, uh, had a heart attack a couple of years ago and I pulled through it and I had a major heart Me attack. Me too. 
you know what I'm talking about? So I had a heart attack. I had open heart surgery. I had a triple bypass. I've got pictures of my heart down on the I fridge. I had a bypass. Yeah. Bypass. I, had, I, yeah. I, I, I got, I got, so you had a bypass. I had a triple bypass. Uh, I don't think there was any God involved. I think there was a surgeon involved. I don't have any reason to think that there was a God involved in pulling me through. It doesn't even make sense for a God to want to pull me through. Um, I have no reason to think that a God exists or had any impact on that at all. So now we're in a situation where both of us had heart attacks. Both of us had heart surgery. I don't think a God was involved. You do. How do we tell which one of us is right? Um, there's no way to tell uh, which, uh, you know what? There's no way to tell which one of us is right. And I'm a logical thinker. I'm not like the, one of those guys who's going to argue with you. I guess. Till, like, I guess. Till the, the, the thing is, you know, I mean, the thing is, if, if somebody says, like, if I see here's a real lottery ticket and here's a fake lottery ticket and we shuffle them up and I say, how do we tell the difference? And we can say, you know what? There's no way to tell the difference. Is there any circumstance under which I could point to one of those and say, that's the one that's real if we can't tell the difference? At that point, you would have probably most likely, most likely you wouldn't be able to, you know, unless it hey, was like, which is why, some, which uh, is maybe hologram is, on the lottery ticket. That's about it. No, 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 no. I'm saying if, if there was, if there was a hologram, then we would say there's a way to tell the difference. It's the hologram. I'm saying here's two tickets. We're told one of them's real and one of them's not. And you and I agree. We have no way we can tell which one of them's real. And so in that scenario, Correct. I don't, I, I, I can't point to one of them and say it's real. But you can't, you are, you are pointing at one of us and saying, this is the one that I think God messed with. You know, I, you know, all I can say is I do believe because at one point I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I mean, you're, you're a little older than me, I see. Right. And eventually you're going to, you know, you're going to pass. I'm going to pass. And eventually we're going to find out the truth, man. And then that's what no, I'm sir. To, you know? No, sir. No, sir. If in fact there is no God and no afterlife, then you and I are both going to die and neither one of us are going to discover anything. There won't be an us to discover. If the end is yeah, the you end. Gotta hope he, you you got to believe. You got to hope he's able to No, you don't got to believe. No, you don't got to believe. No, you don't got to believe. Hey, maybe, what on earth makes you think that life isn't sad? Why, why would you prefer to believe something that may not be true just because it hides how many? So, for example, I got one life. It's the only life I know I'm going to get. And every action I take is based on the notion that I have no reason to think that I'm going to get an afterlife. And I think that when people live their life as if they are actually going to get an afterlife, they live it worse because they don't have the motivation to make things right the first time, to solve problems, to work together towards solutions. If the earth is just a place to wipe our feet until we get to go to happy land forever, um, then wh why should we care about this? If you were living in a shitty rundown apartment and you knew that next year you were going to get to move into a mansion, how much effort would you put into sprucing up that shitty rundown apartment? You don't have to answer. We already know. None of us would do but it no, any more me, than would absolute. But that, see, that's a kind of maybe difference between me and the next guy. Whatever I do in life, I do try to make some sort of effort. I didn't say there'd be no effort. It, okay. So you're, you're in a little, um, run down trailer in a trailer park and the water's broken. You're going to fix that. Cause you're going to keep using that. But if there's a hole in the wall and you covered it up with duct tape while you're there and you know that next year you're going to be out of that trailer and living in a mansion down the street. How much effort and money and resources are you going to put towards replacing that duct tape and putting up a whole new wall? Uh, definitely not going to put up a whole new wall, but I would try to patch up with wood. That's about it. That's Why? what I would go with. Why? Just so, uh, so, you know, it's not cold or too hot in, in, in summer or too cold in the winter. No, 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 no. The air's leaking. When, when you move out, that trailer is going to get thrown away. Nobody else is ever going to use this. Why would you spend point, time repairing something? That's... No, at that point, I yeah. wouldn't. No. Yeah. And so when we all, according to Christianity and Catholicism, et cetera, when we all leave this world, what happens to this world? 
And it seems to it seems like the world could get worse every year, my man. So I mean, you know, what are you gonna that, do? Wow, I, I I said when we all, according to Catholicism, oh, when we all leave, when they're still gonna be here. Once we all leave and nobody's here, what happens? Yes, that's a tough question. I mean, will it still be here? What does the Bible Probably. say? What does the Bible say? Uh, I don't have the Bible in front of me, but uh, I don't even remember that passion, to be honest with you, you know? So, Revelation 21, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. The, the, according to the Bible, no, I mean, like, like, earth goes like, away. Like, like I'm trying to tell you, my friend, you know, like I, I go to church, but I'm not like in terms of the Bible. I don't know the Bible word for word. I just, you know, I mean, I read it when I was a kid. That's about it. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I don't know what to say because. This wasn't about whether or not you knew what the Bible says off the top of your head. I'm just, you might have. I'm just saying, you know. You, you might have, you know, might not have. You know. But but now we're in a position where my point was, um, hang on. My point was that if you knew that the earth that you were going, that you were living on was going to go away, you don't have, a, and you're going to live in paradise. You don't have as much motivation to care for it as if you thought this is the only place that I'm going to live and my kids are going to have to, to take care of this place. That gives people different motivations to take care of the earth, right? Correct. I mean, if I didn't have yeah. kids, I probably That's would uh, put less effort And this in, is why, you know what I mean? And, and, and all of this was because um, you had basically said, hey, neither one of us knows, so you just got to believe. And my point was, no, if you believe that there's another life, that impacts how you live this one. And this is the only one we know we're going to get. And so we're now in a position, Tony, and I appreciate, I genuinely appreciate your call and your honesty and you're a nice guy and everything else. But from my perspective, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, we are now in agreement that you believe that there's a God and a God that interacts in reality in a detectable way. And I do not believe that. And you prefer to believe that you're going to go to an afterlife with this God and that that fundamentally changes how you act in this life. And I think it changes how you act in this life as well. And my only objection is I don't understand how people can run around and say, I don't have any way to prove to anyone, including myself, that God is real but I'm going to believe it anyway. Because not only do I not think it's a good thing to believe in a God, I definitely don't think it's a good thing to believe in something that we admit we can't demonstrate to anyone, including ourselves. So if, if somebody came to you and said, I don't have any reason to believe that, um, that aliens are replacing me every night with a clone, but I choose to believe it anyway, or I'm going to believe it anyway. I mean, wouldn't you kind of look at them like, like a little stank face of how does that make sense? I mean, in terms of aliens, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really believe in aliens, but who knows? But, uh, well, well, hang on. I mean, in terms. Why? I, I, I get it. I, I apologize. I interrupted you in mid thought, but you shrugged off aliens and, and did it with a kind of a laugh as if we all should. Aren't aliens, which are natural in origin. In a universe with billions upon billions of stars, aren't alien creatures almost a certainty and definitely more likely than a supernatural being that no one can demonstrate? Well, um, in terms of the aliens and uh, what you just asked right there, first, before I even go into that, I did say at the end of the aliens comment, I said, who knows? So maybe they are out there. Maybe I just never seen one, so I, I can't tell you, you know? But in terms I've never of, seen one either. Um, but yeah, I mean, how many dude, stars we probably, are we probably both both locked up? You've never seen a god either. Oh. Yeah, I've never seen a god. However, I have seen stars and planets orbiting those stars that form galaxies that are parts of universes 
where there are billions and billions of universes with billions of galaxies, with billions of stars, with billions and billions of planets. And you think it's that we're the only ones that this is the only thing in the entire universe where life is. I, I couldn't say, to be honest with you, I just, I'm not really, uh, up on that topic, but I believe that possibly, uh, we might be, we might not be, but I mean, we if, might if be, we might not be that topic. I, yeah. Yep. I, I'm I with you. Good. We might be the only ones we might not be, but it seems like there's a thing called the Drake equation where we can attempt to calculate how many likely, uh, habitable planets. We might be the first, we might be the last, we might be the only, but to look out at all of those planets and be like, yeah, it's, it's more ridiculous for someone to think there's life somewhere out there than it is to think there's a God. That's the one I don't get because I agree. I don't know for sure whether or not there's aliens, but I know enough about science and about biology to suggest that it's at least in the, it seems unlikely that we're the only living thing in the entirety of the universe, but at a minimum, even, even if we were, how does the notion that life could exist somewhere else in the universe become more ridiculous than the claim that there's a God that nobody can demonstrate? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm going to tell you like, you know, see every, I, I believe everyone does have their own opinion. Everyone has the right to write their own opinion. And uh, yeah, of course you say you can't see him because we can't, but as me personally, I, I, I do believe in Jesus Christ. I do want to meet him one day, but am I positive that he's there? No. Do I want to believe he's there? Yes. Do I currently believe he's there? Yes. But we have a difference of opinion on that and that's fine because I mean, everyone has their own opinion on it and everyone should but stand up for what they believe in. So is it okay? I mean, I, I agree with you. Everybody has a right to their opinion and I'll defend people's right to have their opinions, um, forever. Does that mean that there aren't opinions that are worthy of challenging? Like, for example, if someone thinks, Hey, white people are better than brown people. That's my opinion. Is it okay just to let that sit? Oh, well, you know, if they feel that way in, in our country, uh, they do, they do have the right to say that, but you know what? I didn't, I didn't say anything about, I didn't know, Tony, Tony, I'm not asking about what they have Maybe a right I to do. Understood the court. Uh, yeah. I'm not asking whether or not they have a right. They absolutely, I will say at the outset in the United States, everyone has the right to be a bigoted piece of shit if they want to. Does that mean that we don't know what the truth is? If, if it's somebody's opinion that the earth is flat, it, should we not challenge that? Uh, you, have, you have every right to, correct. Yeah, but if they're running around thinking the earth is flat and that white people are better than brown people and that men should have power over women, um, aren't they going to vote based on those beliefs? And aren't isn't their vote going to impact the rest of us? Right. Yeah, they're going to definitely vote that way, but will impact the rest of us? It will impact some people, but it will not impact all. Okay. So right now the Supreme court has overturned Roe v. Wade and it's done so because there are a bunch of religious people who have objections to abortion and that's their religious opinion. But by, by exercising and vocalizing that opinion and then voting on behalf of it, they have now impacted the rights of every person who could potentially become pregnant, whether they share those religious beliefs or not. This is why you can't just say, Hey, everybody's entitled to their opinion because some opinions are wrong. And when you legislate those opinions on others, you impact those people's lives. This is why it matters. That is, that is uh, see, I appreciate, I appreciate where you're at, Tony, but when you do this, Hey, I believe in Jesus. I want to see Jesus someday. You don't believe in Jesus. No big deal. Let's just both live our lives. The difference is that I used to believe in Jesus. I was a fundamentalist Southern Baptist. And there are many people out there who share those views as well. And we voted based on those beliefs and we made decisions about our lives based on those beliefs. And so there are people who don't seek medical attention for themselves or their kids because they believe that 
everything comes from God and that God can heal you. There are people who don't believe that other people should have the right to marry the person that they love because they're ostensibly of the same gender or gender identity, et cetera. And so they legislate in ways that prevent that from happening. This is a bunch, this isn't just, hey, I got my opinion, you got yours, let's leave each other alone. This is, I have my opinion. Oh yeah, well, I have my opinion and I'm gonna legislate such that it impacts your life. That happens every day. I understand that, you know, and, and the reason so, I so wouldn't it be in, because I saw you, I saw you guys were talking about, you know, religion. So I said, you know what, me being, I'm, I'm, I'm not like one of those guys, who, like, you know, I'm, I'm not one of those guys who mean to people, whatever. I'm a nice guy and I'm, I'm down to earth. I said, you know what, let me chime in with my opinion and, you know, have a conversation with you about it and she, and, and, yeah. and you know, and, and that's basically it, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, oh. You know, I'm Does not it matter to, what's I'm not, true? I'm not a mean guy, you know? No, I don't think you're a mean guy at all, Tony. I, I, I appreciate you more than any other call we've had today, for sure. But here's the thing. Do you care whether or not what you believe is true, or do you care more about whether or not it's comforting? Oh, honestly, I want to believe it's true. I, like I said, I have, I'm not sure if it's true, but it is definitely, uh, comforting because the thing is you know i'm not a young guy anymore and i'm definitely uh we'll put it like this uh there, there's some fears uh you know so i mean uh you know when the day comes i do definitely want to i want to still live something you know what i mean yeah yeah i'd like to still live too it's just that i care more about what's true and real and if i allow my preference for a fantasy to impact what I believe, then all of a sudden I will believe things that aren't true and that will impact my life negatively. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. But you know, I mean, yeah. you know, there, there, there's, I don't know if you are, if you're uh, like, it was probably somewhere in the nineties, there was a, this big saying, it was like all over the place in New York city. Cause I live in New York. Right. Uh, it was, you got to believe in something and it was in all the billboards and, and you, if you looked at that, you're like, oh shit, I do got to believe in something because you know what, maybe, maybe, you know, I'll do the right thing for this guy today. Maybe I'll do the right thing for that guy. Tomorrow. Believe in many things. And, you know, yeah, it's a meaningless I sentence. In, I believe in everything that is demonstrably true. And I, and I don't understand how people can willingly believe in something that is not demonstrably true or that may be demonstrably false. Tony, we've got, we've got some other calls on and up and I, I, I do want to move in a second, but I want to give you something to think about. And then I hope you call back again. Cause I, I, I wanted, I, I hope we get to discuss with you at some point, the real why's you believe it's true when you're actually pursuing caring, whether it's true or not. But one of the things that you said early on in the call that stuck out to me is super dark. So this has nothing to do with whether or not your religion is true. It's that you're finding comfort in stuff that if you extend it out is dark as hell. And the specific thing you said was that God is good and you feel blessed because your children have been born healthy. And the extended implication of that is dark as hell because of all of the children who aren't born healthy, all of the children who get cancer and the like. And, and so it's this sort of subjective thing that you were acknowledging when you said that. God is good to me and blesses me, but you can't say he's universally good. If when a child is born healthy, which most children just are, but when a child is born healthy, that's God being good. And that's God blessing you. Unless you're also going to acknowledge when a child is born with a terrible illness or develops cancer to that person, that's God being a bastard and God being cursing as opposed to blessing. And there's something pretty, it, it's pretty dark what you're saying you're finding comfort in because God doesn't extend that comfort to everyone who even believes in him. Well, you know, one comment I'm going to make about that, uh, you know, I, I do have a friend who, uh, unfortunately he, uh, he had three kids and two of them came there, were born with Down syndrome and, uh, kept them, but he's having a hell of a time raising them. And I just look at him, I'm like, man. If that was me, would I just bounce? You know what I mean? 
and I believe in Jesus because I, you know, I mean, I prayed, I prayed because the time when uh, I have four kids, right? And the first kid uh, that my wife had at those, that time I was actually using uh, alcohol. I was drinking quite a, quite a bit during my first kid and kid came out normal. So I was, I was blessed, you know what I mean? Because I was drinking, drinking like every weekend, every other weekend or whatever during when I wasn't working and kid came out fine, you know? Yeah, Tony, I just, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like right now you're more of just sharing a story that the thing reminded you of without engaging in the point, which is even the thing that the value that you're getting out of it isn't true. Except for you can subjectively say my kids were born healthy and I'm going to call that a win, which I would call it a win too. I'm planning to have a couple of kids myself at this point in life. I've changed recently on that. Uh, and, uh, I, I will also call it a win, but I'm not going to give it to some external force that rather capriciously applies these blessings and, and, and in a very, again, very dark way curses other people. I don't, I, it, it's something I want you to ponder yeah. on, I guess, between now and when you call back with why you believe it's true when your, when your assignments of all the reasons God are, what's the last thing you accuse God of being a bastard for doing? If when he does good things, it's a blessings. What was the last thing he cursed you with and was an asshole about? I don't actually, you know, I mean, in terms of calling him a bastard or asshole, I would never do that. Why? But, you know, I do, because I, um, I'm not that type of guy, you know what I mean? But, uh. Would you call any person about, are, if a person came up you're and punched you in the in face. you're not fair in your criticism? Right. If someone punched you in the face, is it okay for you to call him a bastard? I just ask for if it comes to, yeah, on the street, absolutely. But okay, and if God gives somebody Jesus. cancer, that's significantly worse than punching someone in the face. So if if punching someone Correct. in the face is worthy of calling them a bastard, so I'm not asking you to call a him a bastard right now, but I am sort of asking when would he be worthy of it at the same level of a random punch in the face? Uh, uh, and when's the last time you acknowledge something bad happening as a curse of God, or do you only assign God the positive things, you only think about the things that are his fault if they're good, if they're quote unquote blessings, and you absolve him of every terrible, dark, and evil thing that are the opposites of the things you've gotten out of him. Uh, I don't really absolve him. Uh, I just follow up with him and say, hey, man, why you do this to me? You help me out. And, and, and furthermore, besides that, uh, I don't really you know, call him out his name or anything. I just say, man, you gave me a hard one on this one. Let's try to work this out. You know okay, wait, I mean? wait. Earlier you said God is good because your babies are healthy, right? Yeah, he is good. Okay, is God right. evil if your babies aren't healthy? Uh, that, no, see, that see means... the answer is yes. If if you're trying to stay consistent the and God exists. Yeah, I know if I'm staying The answer is yes. I mean, that could be also just, you know, you had terrible luck as well. You know what I mean? No, 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 no. No, because that could mean your babies are good, are healthy because you had good luck and God had nothing yeah. to do with it. So you don't get to say God is good if your babies are healthy, but he's, it may just be bad luck if your babies are unhealthy. That's inconsistent, Tony. And again, look, sorry, I'm turning this into a new argument. We have a bunch of calls to get through and then super chats. I want to give you time to think about it, Tony. I really yep. do want you to call back with having thought about it and not just try and I, I can acknowledge you've only tried to converse. You've been very good faith this whole time. I'm the one yep. right now getting all worked up and I shouldn't do that. Uh, so, so can, and can it's two on one. Yeah. Can we just say you'll think about it and you'll call back and we'll have that discussion. Yeah. You know what? I mean, listen, there's no reason to get excited about anything, <laughs> sure. anything or whatever. Everything I disagree. Is all good. But... And you know what? It was great to talk to you guys. And I want to yeah. wish you grace a uh, good Sunday and there's some, uh, baseball on TV. Go watch that too. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what's funny, Tony, is some the, the screener said uh, that they weren't so sure that your accent was real. New York is home for my family. We're from Levittown. I'm, I'm and as soon as I heard your yeah, as soon as I heard your accent, yeah. I was like, oh, he doesn't our screener yeah. doesn't know about Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, Tony. By the way, I, I don't care about baseball, but I do have a Jackie Robinson rookie card. So if you know somebody who's interested, it's graded and for sale. But thanks, Tony. There you go. Thanks, Tony. All right, guys, you take care of yourself. God bless. See ya. Oh, yeah, see ya. I, I doubt it. <laughs> it's one of those things, I'm glad you stopped when you did, because I, I was like, look, 
we're, we're just going to keep going and we'll end up, you know, we've had him on here for almost a half an hour and we're yeah. kind of beating up on him. And I skipped over the thing that you wanted to address, uh, intentionally because it was, I'm, I'm not knocking you by all means. It was great to address and it led to some great revelations, but it's yeah. like, I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm trying to peacefully direct towards conclusions. And I knew if I jumped in on that, I would not be able to maintain myself because when yeah. you say, oh, God made it so all my kids come out healthy. Oh, does that mean that the kids that don't come out healthy is God tormenting those people? Or, you know, are you just cherry picking, you know, this, but it's like, ah, you're convinced that because your kids came out, okay, that you're right with God and God did something for you. God did you a solid. Uh, I'm yeah. even speaking more Brooklyn the longer I'm on the phone with him, which is. Oh like yeah. My, my accent Brooklyn. comes out when I get going, but it, it shows up. But yeah, but it's like, um, the, the, the very notion, I mean, I think we're, we're, we're most on the same page. Yeah. I just don't understand how someone can say, here's a proposition. And I have no way of telling if it's true or not, but I'm convinced it's true. Because if you say that with regard to the lottery ticket, he gets it. If you say that with regard to, you know, baseball, he gets it. As soon as you say that about God, he doesn't get it. And it's the same way that you demonstrated this when it's like, okay, if God, if, if something good happens in your life and you're like, oh God, you're wonderful. At what point does it become okay when something bad happens to say, God, you're a bastard. It's all special pleading. The God belief is protected from criticism so that it's a win-win scenario only. You can only say good things about God when he does good things. And by the way, the Bible goes a step further, which is to praise God in all things, including the bad things. And yeah. so if your kids, if your kids come out deformed, um, and, and broken physically, just unable to survive, you're supposed to thank God for that too. Yeah. Um, not, not every denomination holds to that. This, I, I, I really, and I'm not going to thank God for it, Tony, but I'm appreciative that there are theists who can still call in and say, you know what, here's what I think. Um, and I don't know why it's a big deal. And yeah. then when you talk about why it's a big deal, they're like, oh, maybe, maybe it's a bigger deal than I thought. I, I would like it to be true, but you know, the truth is it's comforting and maybe I believe it because it's comforting. And that's, I mean. I don't, I don't know. There's much more I could ask for in any single phone call Yeah, to, to get somebody yeah. to just say, okay, let me, let me reduce my confidence perhaps a bit. Hello everyone. I'm Jimmy Snow. I'm the executive producer of the line. And at night I sneak into Matt Dillahunty's house and I trade his cereals for other cereals. He comes out and he's like, wait, I, these are cereals I buy, but I swear I had different cereals. Anyway, would you like to support this channel or any specific show? You can do so over on Patreon or in channel memberships. There are special tiers for special shows or for the channel at large, and it helps us expand programming as well as hopefully very soon launch it in podcast form. Now, also, if you'd like to support, you can like, you can subscribe, you can leave a comment or a super thanks, which is a special highlighted comment that you pay for. Those are fun. And, you know, Screw the algorithm. Go check out something over here, I suppose. Boy, I hope I can still put those icons there, because if I can't, this is going to look really stupid. I'm going to go buy some Cocoa Puffs and switch out Matt's mini-wheats now.